point of saying, I can't take no more. I had enough. I'm trying to do right, but I'm suffering wrong. I've had enough of running scared. I had enough. I'm tired of going out full and coming in empty. I'm discouraged. I'm dismayed. I'm depressed. Lord, I can't keep living like this. My fight has faded. My zeal has gone cold. My determination has dwindled. And Elijah is not alone in this kind of spiritual paralysis. For if we ask Brother Moses to come here, he had similar experiences. Moses had enough. He was dealing with church folk. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, yeah, church folk will make the preacher backslide. Lord told Moses, speak to the rock. Moses said, I ain't got time to speak. I'm tired of these church folk. Jeremiah went through a period of defeat and despondency and he decided Lord every time I try to preach tithing and they won't tithe I try to preach being on time and they won't be on time Lord I try to preach prayer and they won't I'm tired I'm not going to say nothing else I'm not preaching another sermon I'm done I'm finished dealing with these folk but thank God he said that, oh, that I was weary with forbearing and his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones Jonah had this kind of situation Elijah is not the only one and, and, and let me tell you what, what bothers me about the text Bishop is that James describes Elijah as a righteous man he says Elijah is a man who prayed in faith He's a man who prayed effectually and fervently. Remember now when he went to Ahab, the Lord never told him to go to Ahab. I'm going to show you something right here. He goes to Ahab and he tells Ahab, it's not going to rain until I give word. You read the text when you get home. And then he went and the Bible said, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. So he went and said, Lord, now don't embarrass me now. Come on, somebody. You told me to speak those things that be not as if they... And sometimes we got to be able to step out on faith and go on and say it anyway and say, Lord, now you got to make it come to pass because my word is already out. He was a righteous man. He prayed in faith. Uh, he's a man who knows how to call on God. He's a, he, he's a man who knows how to reach the throne of heaven. A man who knows how to talk to the Lord. A man whose prayers avail much. He's a man who understands the God of heaven answers prayer. When he prayed for the skies to withhold the rain, God answered. When he prayed for God to release the rain, God answered. When he prayed for God to bring life back to the widow's son, God answered. When he prayed for God to respond by fire, God answered. But I'm so glad when he prayed for death, God did not answer. See, God doesn't answer all of our prayers, brothers and sisters. Uh, every now and then, God says, that's not the right prayer. See, it was not the will of God for Elijah to die underneath Jezebel's sword. And don't think just because your foe has defeated your friends that God will allow them to defeat you. Oh, I'm going to say that one more time. Don't think just because the brother on the left has fallen and the sister on the right has fallen and somebody in the back has fallen and somebody in the front has fallen that that means that, that you will fail too. The Lord does at least three things to help us in situations when we feel like we can't take no more. God strengthens us. God searches us. And then God sends us. I said God strengthens us. He searches us. And then he sends us. Notice, if you will, in 1 Kings 19, 5 and 8, then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. 
He looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mount of God. See, the Lord dispatched an angel to aid his servant. Certainly in this text, we can understand what the Hebrew writer meant when he said, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? As Elijah is snoozing in an effort to escape his reality, the angel touches him and says, get up and eat. And right near his head is some hot bread and some water. Elijah ate the bread and drank the water, but continued to lay down. The angel comes back a second time, get up and eat. Anybody God had to keep telling the same thing over and over again? Get up and eat, Elijah. We don't always get it the first time. But thank God for the second time. Elijah has just been in the presence of an angel. Watch this. But he's still in a spiritual slump. Okay. You wonder why some folk can come to church and still not get it. I always wondered how uh, uh, folk, you can have two people in the same service. And, and, and you can have one that gets the revelation. One that gets the touch. One that gets the blessing. And the other one knows who was wearing what. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here now. Who was sitting next to who. How many times so and so went to the bathroom in the same place. But not getting the revelation. Even though they're in the presence of the Lord. He's in the presence of an angel, but he's still in a emotional abyss. He's not only distraught, but he's disconnected. But God will not give up on him. The Lord will not discharge him from his duty. The Lord will not release him from service. And so the angel comes the second time. Elijah, the journey is too much for you. You need to eat some food and drink some water. You're not going to die in this wilderness. God is not finished with you yet. Get up and eat. You have a journey. You have a destiny. You have a path to follow. I understand you can't make it by yourself. I know you've had enough. I know you're tired, but God never grows weary or tired. The Lord gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. May I tell you today that the reason Elijah had to eat and drink uh, uh, because it was not a matter of what was around him. It was a matter of what was in him. Oh, let me say that one more time. It was not a matter of what was around him, but what was in him. If you have the right stuff in you. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you have God's supply in you, if you are nourished by the Lord, you will be able to make it. Oh, Lord. You see, brothers and sisters, when you experience a spiritual setback, the only way to make a comeback is to be nourished by the Lord. Don't give up the fight in the middle of the match. Oh, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Uh, don't quit at half time. God is able to renew your strength. God is able to revitalize your mind. God is able to recharge your battery. God is able to renew your hope, to rebuild your ruins, to revive your spirit. The only way to get strong is through adequate nutrition. Now, what are you saying, Pastor Swan? I'm trying to tell you that man does not live by bread alone. 
but by the every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We must desire the sincere milk of the word. We must allow the word of God to dwell in us. The only way to recover from your spiritual ruin is by way of God's word.